Welcome to this week's episode of Esports Wrap. I'm your host, Michael Amogon. And that's my reminder to turn my phone on silent. Now, this week we're going to be talking about loot boxes, which is something that we haven't really talked about too much since December of 2017 in episode 16 of Esports Wrap. So it's been a while. Um, and there's been some new developments since December 2017, namely a bill that's being brought up by a U.S. Uh, senator. Uh, this is not the first time something like this has happened. There were actually some senators from Hawaii that tried to bring up a very similar type of bill, but it did not really get anywhere too far. This one, though, it seems to be picking up some traction, and it's already got bipartisan agreement, which means that both sides um of the political party at least one member or some or so on and so forth agree to it uh so you have the republicans and you have the democrats and you know both sides are agreeing with the bill now what this bill is it's that <clears throat> it is a bill that is focusing on protecting children from gambling and creating addictive habits when it comes to games and this is in the form of loot boxes and pay to win uh, schemes which has been something to be quite honest that for a long time now especially when it comes to mobile games this has become very sketchy in the way that they actually plan these things out like they they actually make it for a lot of them um, very gambling centric and that's the whole idea behind loot boxes is that you know you buy an item and then you have a random chance of getting any of these items that's inside this box and there are different percentages that you could have um, some as low as like I think I saw a game recently where getting a particular character inside of it was like 0.001% or something like that like it was super rare to actually get that and it's kind of like that, where if you really want this best-in-class character or this character that you just really like, then you have to spend a ton of money more than likely to get that character. And at the end of the day, you still may not even end up with that character. And <clears throat> that's not how gaming really truly really should be. If we take a look at something like League of Legends, where you have to buy characters or... Um, to actually play a particular skill set or you just like that way how that character is then you don't have to run through a bunch of loot boxes to open up that character you can go in uh pay x amount of money and uh or just play the game and get in-game currency and buy that character now that's a little different because then uh that doesn't really fall under loot boxes and that doesn't really fall under pay to win which is the next part of this entire bill it's you know it's focusing to make sure that kids on especially those 13 and younger don't fall into this trap of a gambling addiction um or the idea that you can buy uh your way into better gamings um gamings i, I don't think that was said properly but essentially be able to like get a better experience to the game by paying more money um this though will affect a lot a lot a lot a lot of games and <clears throat> i think one of the key ones that is really going to truly affect is uh card games so ones like pokemon uh hearthstone magic the gathering um, Yu-Gi-Oh, like the online variations of those games, or even just the, um, even if it's not online, but it's a experience that's set to one person, then this can still affect them because, you know, you're opening up a pack and in all truth, card packs were the first set of, um, loot boxes here in the West. Uh, the original first set were like the pachinko games, the gacha games, um, where, you know, it's uh, you throw it down and you maybe get something inside there. You maybe don't. And 
it's all luck of the draw for the most part. Now, in regards to this actual um, this actual bill, there are a lot of contention on both sides. Um, so, <clears throat> if we take a look at Kotaku, they say that Senator Josh Hawley, who's a Republican, uh, announced that the bill would ban loot boxes and pay-to-win microtransactions. Whoops. Uh, right, to a banned uh, pay-to-win microtransactions and games played by minors. And that it's a very broad label that will include both games designed for kids under 18 and games whose developers knowingly allow minors, minor players to engage in microtransactions. Apparently, <clears throat> wow, the bill was introduced as the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. Um, in the press materials announced in the bill, Holly's team brought up the Activision game Candy Crush as an egregious example of pay-to-win microtransactions thanks to its $150 luscious battle, sorry, luscious battle, sorry, bundle that comes with a whole bunch of goodies. This bill would also likely apply to a host of online games that feature loot boxes and other ways in which players can spend money for real benefits. They say that, quotes, when a game is designed for kids, game developers should not be allowed to monetize addiction. And when kids play games designed for adults, they shouldn't be they should be walled off from compulsive microtransactions. Game developers who knowingly exploit children should face legal consequences. All in all, this really and truly started because of the backlash faced from, and this is my own personal opinion as well, um, games, I, th I think the main culprit was Star Wars Battlefront 2, but around the same time, uh, I think it was Middle Earth Shadow of, uh, Shadow of War had a similar issue when it came to the microtransactions portion of it, while Star Wars was more of the loot box side of things. Um, <clears throat> both of them were pretty bad when you really took a look down to it and to the boosts that each one of them offered. And, um, you know, when you really take a look at games that, you know. Oh, thanks for the follow, um, Hicktim9080. And thanks for the host as well. Welcome to the Cookie Pack. Now getting into this again um when it comes to this kind of stuff they're also making mention and i would have said it just a moment ago that it's for game for people ages 18 and under that they're really focusing this on i i need to correct myself i said 13 and under earlier um but in terms of that it doesn't stop there it also applies for any games that are maybe meant for adults but Something like God of War, um, Candy Crush, uh, gacha games that like are seemingly the rage. I think one of the more recent ones that someone had suggested to me was Epic Seven, and so I was playing through that, and that thing is rife with uh, <laughs> trying to get you to buy stuff. Um, even things like okay. Let's use League of Legends and uh, Mobile Le Legends Buying Buying as examples. These games, for well, the most part, you can spend your money to buy characters. And these are microtransactions, yes, but they're not microtransactions that are meant to be pay to win. And thank you for following Ghost Laser. <clears throat> sorry, Layer 67. Welcome to the cookie pack. Um, right, so these games are not meant... Well, those purchases are not meant to be... Um, my, uh, pay to win microtransactions those purchases are that i'm talking about are the ones for exp boosts or experience boosts which significantly improve like how fast you level and so you know things like that that's probably going to get banned to be quite honest if something like this goes through which means that leveling is going to take a lot longer nowadays um, anything from that gives you more gold is probably going to get banned more, uh, any particular item that you can just 
that you would normally have to play through the game for if you just are able to purchase that in bulk then that's probably going to get banned um especially if it's something that you use to maybe like meld your character or meld weapons or whatnot <laughs> <laughs> Tim says, how can I fulfill my six-year-old gambling addiction? Oh, affliction, sorry. Uh, according to this, in not so long, uh, if this actually goes through, you won't be able to, period. Like, you'll probably have to uh, play tic-tac-toe or pick up sticks or something like that and start betting with your friends. Like, that's probably going to be it. But if you actually do have a seri you do have a gambling addiction or affliction as you're calling it, then you should probably go and see help with that because that's actually not healthy. Just saying. Anyway, now, of course, you know a lot of people have come out against all of this. Uh, the ESA has come out saying, you know, the video game. Uh, but let me actually get into who the ESA is. They are the electronic. Sorry. Uh, Entertainment Software Association. These are pretty much the people that try to shape the way how games are portrayed and like marketed and stuff like that. And they're a lobbyist group for the most part. And they sent over a statement saying that numerous countries, including Ireland, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, determined that loot boxes do not constitute gambling. We look forward to sharing with the senator the tools and information the industry already provides that keeps the control of in-game spending in parents' hands. Parents already have the ability to limit or prohibit in-game purchases with easy-to-use parental controls. And I actually do think that they have a fair point when it comes to that. Because, for the most part, parents have a means to create accounts just for their kids. And that has parental restrictions based on that with their own uh, credit card information. So they can make it required that they have to put in their password or fingerprints or whatever it is to actually make a purchase. That can be a time thing. That can be something that um, happens for each and every purchase. And if you're not doing that with your kids, then you probably need to start doing that, to be quite honest. Um, now, Google has taken upon themselves to already start working towards something very similar to this by requiring it that loop games that have loot boxes uh, disclose the odds of winning the digital goods. So pretty much they would have to say that this game includes loot boxes. The, the rate of actually getting X, Y, Z inside the game is 10, 20, 50%. Um, and I actually have it listed off. How that's going to look I'm not 100% sure it's going to be interesting, but Fortnite is going to be very interesting as well. But then again, that introduces us to the whole uh, part about cosmetics. Now, me personally, personally, I have no problem with cosmetics. And if you want to do loot boxes for cosmetics, go right ahead. I don't feel that it really endorses any play to win elements of it if you want to buy that outright that's fine as well um pay to win has always been a negative thing when it comes to gaming for a lot of people especially um when it comes to mmos or mass multiplayer online games and um it's essentially buying your easy way out it's like you're funneling money to make yourself better instead of actually using your own skill and time and effort to make yourself better and so there's a lot of things that go on about that. You could find more about that online. Um, but in all truth, in all actuality, like this kind of stuff is going to really change how a lot of games work. So Apex, Fortnite, um, games like that, they may see some changes, um, but they may not because they're mainly cosmetics. But if they ban loot boxes in a whole, those games will have to do away with that kind of system and find some other way for people to actually get their items. Fortnite has a really good example, though, when it comes to the Battle Pass. And I think that's one of the reasons why they, they started it off like that. Now, when it comes to Save the World, their um, PvE game, that's really and truly what Fortnite started off as. 
before the battle royale element was added, then the llamas that you would be purchasing, they're going to have to go away. They're going to have to be introduced with something similar to a battle pass or a store that you go in and buy stuff or something of the like, because that allows you to um, bash open the llama, the pinatas. I shouldn't say llamas because llama pinatas. I'm just going to call them pinatas from here on. When you bash them, then you have a chance of getting a regular set of loot, a silver or gold set of like chances. And like the higher up you go, then the better your, your loot, essentially. And you can get anything from plants, for traps, to weapons, to uh, NPCs that help you defend your base, and so on and so forth. Kronos, you're saying so, but I'm not sure what you're saying so far. Now, Final Fantasy. This one's going to be hard for them because Final Fantasy Online has a online store. Actually, now that I think about it, this is going to be interesting indeed because they actually have boosts. That can take you from level 1 to level 60 in a class, which is pretty much end game kind of content. And that's... They may have to get rid of that, at least for the North America side of things. Because that's um that technically is a pay-to-win element of the game. Ah, Kronos. This channel is mainly for... Uh, Esports rap and more tech, the talk shows, but um, throughout the week and main, mainly Fridays and the weekends, it is also meant for gaming. Um, that could be anything from Hearthstone to Rocket League to League of Legends to uh, Overwatch to any other game for the most part. But those probably are the main ones right here and now um, that you probably find me playing. But for Tuesdays and Thursdays, around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're probably going to find one of the talk shows going on, to be quite honest. Um, but, you know, maybe after, because after the show, I then typically head to the gym. And then after gym, if I'm up for it, then I'll probably stream a game or something like that. That's typically when I would um, jump inside one of the uh, matches with you guys until maybe like 10, 10.30, 11. And I, that's when I would be recording stuff with you guys. Um, unless it's like one of the other days throughout the week. <clears throat> now, when it comes to how these games are really going to be sold, a lot of people don't know how these things are really going to change. Now, according to the bill, I, I want to make sure that this is clear. It says that an add-on transaction to an interactive digital entertainment product that eases a user's progression through content otherwise available within the game without the purchase of such a transaction assists a user in accomplishing an achievement within the game that can otherwise be accomplished without the purchase of such transaction, assists a user in receiving an award associated with the game that is otherwise available in association with the game without the purchase of such transaction, or permits the user to continue to access content of the game that had previously been accessible to the user but has been made inaccessible after the expiration or t of a timer or a number of gameplay attempts or with respect to the interactive digital entertainment product that from the perspective of a reasonable user of the product is a game featuring competition with other users providing provides a user with competitive advantage with respects to the game's competitive aspects over users who does not make who does not make such a transaction. Long thing short, if this give this if you buying this thing is gonna make you better at the game, it's a no. But then that also raises the question of pre-orders because you're essentially gaining access to characters that you may be able to unlock later on, earlier. Um, this could also be story content. Being able to play earlier could also be restricted because you're gaining access to a game that you that people would normally have to wait for and wait to play through 
before they are. Now, this can be seen differently than when game companies give a streamer, for example, a game early before it's actually released, like a beta key or something like that. That's different because they're not actually um, paying for the game. There's no actual transaction that's happening. This is just something that's saying, hey, play this game for us. We'll maybe pay you some money, maybe, or we'll give you the game for free. And um, that's how it works. So when it comes to purchasing, though, because you're actually spending money to get a, to gain access to either better armor, better weapons, uh, specific like hidden items, or being able to play early, that's where you may run afoul with this kind of new bill. And the thing about it is, loot boxes are actually better defined than pay win um, transactions or microtransactions, which is kind of funny because loot boxes I think are a worse offender than pay to win. And for that, they say it, an add-on transaction that is randomized or partially randomized fashion unlocks a feature of the product, adds to or enhances the entertainment value of the product, or allows the user to make one or more additional add-on transactions that the user would not have made without making the first add-on transaction, and the content of which is unknown to the user until after the user has made the first add-on transaction. In other words, this is also targeting places that, you know, once the users actually bought something that like continuously pings them to say, hey, you maybe want to buy this. You maybe want to buy this. This is also great, too. That goes with your previous purchase, which kind of sounds, to be quite honest, a lot like what that false Anthem um, gameplay leak was um, presentation was all about. You know, like they're, they're using cues inside the game or like whenever you leave the game and come back, then they give you more stuff. That's actually another thing right there. Giving people, um, let's say you leave a game for X amount of weeks or months and you come back. If they then target you to say, hey, get this welcome back bundle. That's a no, no, unless they're just giving you something free. But even that could be wrong because essentially you're, you're getting something back from them that if people who were just playing would not have been able to get so to get that same kind of like free stuff they would have had to also go on a hiatus and then come back and get that so this <laughs> this can actually run pretty deep when you really and truly think about it and i honestly think this needs a bit more uh study because this can go very wild very quickly and things that you know people may say is you know it's fine may actually not be um so i understand that game companies like ea which are kind of infamous at this point for trying to squeeze out as much money from their players as possible um they may have a hard time with stuff like this players on the other hand though may also have a hard time because we may have to revert to some earlier models of stuff which may mean that you can no longer purchase things inside games and you might get that overall experience, but may require a much longer time period or a much higher uh, purchase cost. Or it could also be a situation where um, you have in-game stores where you have to purchase each thing individually. And so things may have a higher cost in the game based on their rarity. So, for example, if something's really, really uh, good, it may cost five times more than something that's not really good. And while that's more of the pay to win kind of stuff, it still makes it a bit more available. But then again comes the pay to win stuff. So you can't really even go with that anymore because, well, getting that spending more money to get that better item or that better character that's pay to win and so you quite literally will just have to grind your way through whatever it is to get what it is that you want um that may take some time and i know there are quite a lot of you out there which is the reason why whales exist uh whales being a term that stands for people who spend a lot of money on these types of games to get these items that they want 
and they are whales because you know they're big you know they have a lot of money to spend so on and so forth it's a term that actually comes from gambling see the irony right there so when you look at it like that it's you can kind of see where they're coming from with it because there are gambling companies and boards and federations that will expressly state that they believe that gaming does have gambling aspects inside of it so while they may not be the board to handle gaming even though they may call themselves like the gaming board or that kind of stuff they are not actually responsible for the games they're responsible for those gambling aspects of in those games so they actually should be regulated by those gaming board well those gambling boards um but they're not they're actually not really regulated at all um esr es uh, rg rb i forget what their name is but they themselves should be the ones that's really controlling this but they're not um if this bill goes through though the ftc in the united states may be the ones that's actually controlling this and not everyone may want that because look at what's happening with the uh net neutrality and so on and so forth they're trying to knock that down so the ftc doesn't actually have to be the one to take control of it so we may not actually know who gets final control over this kind of bill and these regulations um it may end up being one of the lower uh gaming boards it may end up being the FTC. It may end up being a new board that came come out of nowhere. It may be the ESA. It's hard to tell. Um. Hey Chuck, uh, you t see that I'm talking about what we had got the other day? Yes, exactly. Like this topic is because people were asking about the whole loot box and they wanted to know my thoughts about it. So that's why I'm talking about this one today. Um. Now, one method that they can maybe do, and that is actually mentioned, is that they may have to require to find out each player's age. And if the player is under 18, block it off so that they cannot make these kind of purchases. Because technically, when you're 18 or older, you're an adult. You can gamble at that point. And, you know, there's, there's not really a restriction like that. Um... Though, th that's not to say there won't be some other bill if this one passes, because this one then sets a precedent to then start to target adults and, you know, the gambling addiction side of stuff. So it goes a little bit further than that. Um, because, again, like I said, precedence. Precedence is a very important thing when it comes to law and legal battles. Because once something passes and a court says, this is something that we agree to, that changes the outcome of things going forward exponentially because they now have something to stand on that they could say back in 2019 you guys ruled that xyz actually was a bannable and finable offense we're bringing back to that we'd like you to continue along with this so on and so forth and continue on um i don't know why my nose is itching i feel like there's an old wives tale about that um which might be the reason why um, Google, uh, not my nose itching, but the whole uh, age restrictions. Maybe that's the reason why Google has been taking it upon themselves to start having and listing those uh, numbers and actually stating that the game uses stuff like loot boxes and pay to win. Um, oh, gosh. Sorry about that. Um, now... How do you really control a 16, 17, 18 year old from creating their own account and having you link their stuff? That requires the pretend, um, parental control that the ESA is talking about. And not all parents are going to do that. Not all kids are well controlled enough not to go inside their parents' bag and take their wallet and find their credit card. It's just something that's going out of hand. And if we take a look at Fortnite, this is a very good example of how kids are actually dealing with when it comes to skins. Like, 
they're using skins, cosmetic items, to judge a, per, a player's worth inside this game. Um, that skins that's that doesn't have any effect on uh, how good you are in the game. It doesn't have any. It doesn't form any kind of pay to win. Even with the changing of the item skins, the hitbox is the exact same. Same is for when like, you change your skins. Um, it doesn't change your character's hitbox at all. Um, so nothing changes, but it's that matter of control. And, you know, these kids are getting subjected to being um, tormented and bullied for skins, for cosmetics. So I kind of get where they're coming from with this. Um, granted, Fortnite is, again, battle pass friendly. That's not really loot box. That's not really pay to win. Um... At least the uh, PvP side of stuff. But let's take a look at other games that might have stuff that would start to get banned. Assassin's Creed. All those extra stuff like the bows and arrows and mounts and all that kind of stuff. That you typically can't get but might give you an, like a faster mount or better damage or whatever it is. That's gone. Uh, when it comes to... Um, like, like I mentioned, League of Legends with, and any other game that gives you an EXP or gold boost, that's gone. Um, anything that gives you a better luck percentage to when you're opening up stuff, that's gone. Um, buying keys for in-game chests that you might get, that's gone. Those chests are gone. Um, Overwatch is not, in my opinion, really that bad. But it still has a loot box. But they can still change that so that you can just... They have already have it built in for the most part where you can buy skins with the gold that you have. And so it's a pretty easy switch over for Overwatch um, to just go to a cash... Well, not cash, but a... Um, I guess you can buy gold with, in, with real life cash and then buy what it is that you want. That's something that already happens technically when you sometimes open these loot boxes. You spend your money, you sometimes get gold, and if you get an item that you already had, then that changes over to becomes gold as well. So then you could just buy what it is that you want. Uh, Apex Legends, that has loot boxes as well. Um, that one's a little different though, because you know there are things inside there that aren't necessarily just cosmetics they can be weapons like unlocking weapons as well and so that can become something that's important csgo is definitely who baby they definitely need to change that because they are running afoul by far <laughs> um yeah it's gonna hit the csgo cash sites hard the skin sites the trading sites, everything's going to be hit hard when it comes to that. Um, this bill has such a far-reaching hand that I th that people are still just like finding new things and new ways of actually seeing how this is going to happen and affect these kind of stuff. Um, I think they say, quote, Social media and video games prey on user addiction, siphoning our kids' attention from the real world and extracting profits from fostering compulsive habits. No matter this business's mo this business model's advantages to the tech industry, one thing is clear: there is no excuse for exploiting children th through such practices. Um, this site also says that you know pay-to-win mechanics in games targeted at minors would be outlawed, which is something that we already said. Um, but this also includes progression systems that encourage people to spend money to advance through a game's content at a faster pace. So this is affecting da, 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 Battle Pass. So, yes, those uh, boosts to Battle Pass that you would, well, the Battle Pass within itself that you would purchase, that's going to be something of a no-no as well because that's pushing you ahead further than if you would just play through the game's content and through the free Battle Pass version. Um, yeah. Yeah. They also then say, when a game is designed for kids, game developers shouldn't be allowed to monetize addiction. 
and when kids play games designed for adults, they should be walled off from the compulsive micro microtransactions. Game developers who knowingly exploit children should face legal consequences. We look forward to sharing with the senator the two. Oh, this is our ESA stating this now. Um, they look forward to uh, sharing with the senator the tools and information the industry already provides that keeps control of in-game spending in parents' hands. Parents already have the ability to limit or prohibit in-game purchases with easy-to-use parental controls. Kind of what I said before. Um, and that state attorney general would also be empowered under these new rules to file suits against gaming companies on behalf of the residents of their states on issues like loot box sales. Um, outside of these actions by and interactions with the FTC, United States officials haven't acted as aggressively on loot boxes as regulators abroad. Last year, the Belgian Gaming Commission ruled that loot boxes fall under the jurisdiction of its game gambling laws. Concerns spread across Europe and pushed studios like Blizzard and EA to pull the sale of loot boxes from their games in those countries. Um, throughout the few, uh, first few months of the Senate, Holly has cast a critical eye on social media companies and how they maintain user privacy, so on and so forth. Um, that said... I think that's that Belgian commission is the reason why the ESA said that, you know, all these other countries says that it's not anything to do with gambling. Um, Chuck says they may have to put more things on the disc like they used to when we were growing up <laughs> instead of nickel and diming us so that it's a good thing. Oh, the Korean MMOs, aka Terra, Blade and Soul, Bless. Oh, oh God, let's not talk about Bless Online. Um, you got hit hard off the flop like I did. Um, honestly, I don't see them going back to disc. I see it being more just digital going forward. But much like CD having everything on the disc. So um, like how they did back that. So it's everything on the download. Um, and then you just build upon the download as things progress. Um, so more content. You buy... The DLC. So DLCs, I think, will be fine. If things come out with the DLCs, then and that's fine as well. So things like Destiny, uh, Destiny 2 with their DLCs and how they introduce new weapons and um, content, stuff like that, that'll be fine. But they'll fall into the problem with engrams because people can purchase the cosmetic engrams. Um, that probably will have to go away. Um, when it comes to games like World of Warcraft that's there's no real pay to win inside of that um when you really truly really take a look at it you spend real money to buy uh, coins inside the game that you can then use to break into um gold currency that gold currency you can then use to buy whatever it is that you want from the stores that typically cost a lot or whatnot or you can spend your real life cash to buy leveling boosts that's another thing that, again, is outlawed. So, yeah, even World of Warcraft still has some stuff that's going to be prohibited, now that I think about it. Um, let's take a look. World of Warcraft, the stuff that you can buy. Uh, services. Okay. So, Transmorpher Beacon. Uh, I don't think that's really going to have anything to do with it. Subscription, the Dreadwake. Uh, so those are mounts, uh, bundles. So bundles, digital deluxe items, that might have a problem going forward. Uh, Chuck says, yeah, you're right. It gets affected big time versus um, everything almost. Well, more so, well, more so, more content got Earthworm Jim Windows 97, no, sorry, 95 disc in my hand. But yeah, GameStop is closing down, sadly, with this year within this year so discs for game are going to be harder to find than older ones find older ones if GameStop's still declining out of summer um yeah so you'll probably have to go to places like ebay and stuff like that to actually get a physical copy of a game with places like GameStop closing down but don't forget there's still places like walmart uh best buy uh so on and so forth target that 
inside the states you can still buy these things from and for wholesalers they can still get them from the wholesalers to supply the rest of the world with stuff so the physical stuff is not necessarily going to go away it's just one of the bigger um whole well the bigger um retailers is going out of business so or i shouldn't say going out of business but you know I mean, that whole GameStop thing. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if this bill passes in its current state. Because if it does, there's a whole lot of stuff that's really going to be, you know, having to be changed because of it. But um, if it gets a roadblock, they may have to come back, change a few things, and that'll be interesting to see what they change. Um Honestly, though, like, whew, so many games would have to change their, the way how they plan on making money, the way how they actually offer things to customers. It's it's going to be a little crazy when you think about it. Uh, Chuck says eBay wanted to charge my card $95 for a copy of Mario Kart NES. Man, but yeah, you can, you're correct. Just big vendors going out of, just a big vendor going out of the door. Uh, yeah, that's kind of, but that's probably because you can't really find them all that much. But again, GameStop wasn't really the best place either because they would, if you were selling that same thing, they'd probably give you 20 bucks and sell it for 50 or 30 or whatever it is. To some kind of way, they'd make a profit off of it. So that's not ne necessarily the, uh, a better option either now they do have a FAQ document that was released along this um, proposed bill and if I take a look at that they say which games will be covered and they say the bills prohibit and prohibit um, Wow prohibit oh, blah, blah. prohibition of pay to win and loot boxes applies to two categories of games minor oriented games this character category is defined using a framework inspired by the landmark children online privacy protection act and the recent update proposed by senators holly and markley determinations of a game's target audience would be made by reference to a number of factors including subject matters visual content use of animated characters advertising materials and other indicators now the second category is games for general audiences with the hip uh I don't know why I'm getting tongue-tied. I maybe need to drink some water. The prohibition uh, would apply to other games if developers and distributors have constructive knowledge. Constructive knowledge, which means they have an idea that this may have players that are under 18. Now, how will developers know which games can include pay-to-win or loot boxes? These sound... Um, they say that while it's true that the large proportion of game players are adults, even games with pre predominantly adult player bases, including games marketed primarily to adults, tend to have enormous appeal to children. The onus should be on developers to deter child uh, consumption of products that foster gambling and similarly compulsive purchasing behavior. Just as is true in other industries that restrict access to certain kinds of products and forms of entertainment to adult consumers. Does this ban, bill ban all downloadable content? No. It distinguishes between one-time purchase downloadable content providing new experiences for players and downloadable content available for repeating, repeated purchases that serves primarily to distort player progression through existing content explicitly exempting the former from its prohibitions. Uh, Chuck says, getting back on topic though, one game just hit me FIFA. If that bill passes, this game will... That will will kill ultimate team but go on you've got my attention and you're right fifa is one of the worst offending games when it comes to this kind of stuff and honestly i don't know what fifa's gonna do they may have to go back to um where you purchase things individually or they give everything out for free or you get it as dlcs um i'm honestly not sure fifa did have a game before they introduced it um this kind of system so they may just have to go back to that 
um, it will kill their revenue though. So further development may be hard to come by, at least for the current game. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, now, they say, what about cosmetic downloadable content? Cosmetic downloadable content is excluded from the bill's prohibitions. The bill does commission a study of microtransactions that includes a study of the potential of cosmetic downloadable content to induce compulsive purchasing behavior by children. So, while it's excluded, if the study says that it enables the gambling addiction uh, factor to happen, it may come into play. So, there's that. Um, when it comes to pay to win being defined, they have it as progression based games and competitive based games. Uh, for progression, they say the category includes single player games that multi and multiplayer games featuring some form of total player progression that covers any game that a reasonable user perceives as including the set of goals, rewards, progression through content, including narrative progression or a scoring system. For such games, pay to win is defined as downloadable content that from a perspective of an individual user eases progression through such content assists in accomplishing the game's goals or permits a user to continue to access game content rendered inaccessible and so on and so forth i already said that part for competitive games this category which overlaps with progression based games includes games featuring competition between players for such games uh downloadable content from that from the perspective of reasonable usage provides a competitive advantage there is an exemption for downloadable content providing additional game content that's um, defined by reference to these sort of pay to win microtransactions to prevent publishers from using the new content exemption as a loophole through which to continue to include pay to win content in games played by children. So essentially, what I said earlier by like them putting new items that may be better um, inside the DLC, looks like they won't be able to really do that. They'll have to make it available for everyone across the board, regardless of the DLC. Or lock people off to just that portion of the game content. So, kind of like how WoW does it, where and Final Fantasy does it, so that after you reach like a system that's meant for like level 60 then you can't go on to anything like for level 70 or 80 or 90 or whatever it is for World of Warcraft. Or like if you're level um, 30, you can travel the world in Final Fantasy, but you can't go into like particular raids or you can't do certain quests and so on and so forth because those ones are locked behind the content for the DLC and um, or expansion. And so, you know, you can't get those things. So you're... I don't know. It's kind of weird. Chuck says, and I'm glad you're talking about pay to win right now because on Twitch Prime, currently Dungeon um, Keeper is the biggest pay to win game ever made, which is sounds kind of funny. Warframe also. Ooh. Yeah, Warframe is actually a pretty big one when you think about it. I haven't really played Dungeon Keeper um, much, but yeah, you're right with that one as well. Um, but the whole pay to win thing, it's. If this bill actually gets through. Um, like the more and more you look at this, the more and more things really are going to be changing. So it's going to be an interesting few months because this is not going to have this bill is not going to get passed right away. Um, even just the vote for it will take some time to happen. And if the it does happen, then you know, so on and so forth. But we'll oh. Wow, you bring up a good point. Like I mentioned earlier inside the show, things like Pokemon, Hearthstone, um, Yu-Gi-Oh, Tony Wan's Magic the Gathering, the online and the gaming portions of that. Ooh. I wonder what they're going to do with card packs. Like, I really want to know because that's essentially just emulating real life where you open up a card pack. Is that also going to have an effect on real life card packs? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, 
that's that's slightly concerning when you really think about it. Yeah, because um, the cards rotate with every DLC or every expansion, and they have three expansions within a year for Hearthstone. Um, Pokemon trading card game, they have more expansions than that per year. Um, both of them have wild uh, options for gameplay, which means that you can play older sets of cards. I think Magic the Gathering has a, a wild section as well. Um, wow, this is... Yeah. I think the worst game that's actually... Set of games that's going to be uh, hit are the trading card games. I know people were saying that it's going to be the sports games. I actually think it's going to be the trading card games that's going to be the most hit. Because that redefines the entire thing of how you get your cards. Ooh. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. People dump a lot of money into these to get these card packs. Like, I know people that dump three, four, five hundred dollars into Hearthstone every expansion just to make sure that they get all the cards that they want. Especially if they're going for, like, the complete set. Um... Wow. Wow. Yeah, Chuck. Like, that one... That one's really hitting home. Because I, I play Hearthstone, and now that I think about it, that's going to change it. Um, I know you play Magic. That's going to change that. Yeah, see? You dump 150 to 200 every time. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, folks, that's that's it for this uh, reviewed look at loot boxes. With the well, loot boxes and pay to win, especially since um, this new bill is on the horizon. Um, if you missed any part of this show, feel free to hit us up on moarcookies.com. We have all of our past shows, uh, both the video and the audio versions. If you list, like to listen to podcasts, then the audio version is available. Pretty much everywhere that you can listen to podcasts. Um, so that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, um, so on and so forth. And uh, if you'd like to join in any of the conversations, we have our Discord. That link is typically underneath the video. And um, if you want to hit us up on Twitter, it's M-O-A-R underscore cookies. Or you can hit us up, follow us, and or just let's have a conversation. Esports Wrap is every Tuesday at 6 30 p.m. Eastern, Stan mm. Eastern Standard Time. And our sister show, More Tech, is on Thursdays at 60, 6 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, we do have game nights where we just play different games like League of Legends, uh, Rocket League, Hearthstone, uh, Overwatch, so on and so forth. So feel free. We can jump in, play some games together. Or you could just watch me. Um, either kick some butt or get my butt kicked. So that's it for this episode of Esports Wrap. Until next time, guys, keep it savvy.